thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name's Brian, and in this video we're going to be going over another tactics review for the game Moonstone. This time we're going to be looking at the Commonwealth giant Brunhilde. Brunhilde sports the giant, mercenary, and Norse keywords. She has a melee stat of 4, a melee range of 2 inches, an arcane stat of 0, and an evade of plus 2. She ends up bringing along 13 health boxes and doesn't start losing her first energy until her 8th hit point has been taken, and she has 2 energy, so fairly standard for that normal giant track, and then she also is on a 40mm base. So Brunhilde brings quite a, a few passive abilities here, and the first of which is going to be Giant Forged Blades. Now she carries like, I think, six different swords and then two axes, so she's armed to the teeth. But uh, the Giant Forged Blade passive ability states, if this character deals piercing or slicing damage, increase the damage dealt by plus two. Now, looking at the cards quickly, every single... Uh, offensive melee attack card can do either piercing or slicing damage. Some of them can do both, and that just means that Brunhilde is typically always going to be doing a ton of damage unless your opponent has some kind of crazy modifiers that would punch down the piercing or slicing damage enough to where selecting one of those modes might not be the most attractive thing in the world, but I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that would do something like minus three or subtract uh, three piercing damage specifically. You know, it's it's usually like reduce damage by two, which at that point doesn't really matter so much. But Giant Forged Blades and that melee stat of four at two inches on a 40 millimeter base really makes Brunhilde a close combat specialist. Brunhilde also brings the Bodyguard ability that states, if a noble model within four inches suffers damage, you may have this model suffer that damage instead. And with 13 health boxes and not really losing any efficiency until that eighth one has been taken, she is pretty good to kind of camp around some nobles. And with the 40 millimeter base, meaning means that you have a little bit bigger of a bubble around you. I think 40 millimeters are just a little bit over, a little bit under two inches. So you've got like this 10 inch bubble of protection around her to make sure that your nobles aren't going to be taking a lot of heat from that first hit that they sustain. Brunhilde also brings the loyalty ability that states, if this character takes a reaction step, it may move three inches directly towards the nearest friendly noble model instead of the normal one inch move. So this gives Brunhilde a little bit of extra um, threat projection you're going to want her around nobles anyways to get uh, use out of that bodyguard. Now, you don't have to have mobiles, nobles in her list, but um, I, I know noble and mobile, it's like she's both and wants both. It's crazy. But uh, some some tongue gymnastics, I guess. But um, if you have nobles around you to make sure you're taking advantage of bodyguard, you're going to be able to take advantage of loyalty by projecting your nobles a little further ahead because you have that... Uh, extra safety net with bodyguard and then whenever your opponent does something you can loyalty to reaction step into three inches and then uh, this could also maybe like if you put a noble a little too far out of her bubble you can then try and get uh, the loyalty reaction step to get Brunhilde back in range of bodyguard so it's a little bit of shenanigans that are available to her to kind of mess with your opponent's activations uh, so loyalty is uh, a nice thing on the defensive but really nice on the offensive to give her an extra three inches of threat the final thing that Brunhilde has on the front of her card is her only active ability. Uh, this is called Epic Ballad of or Epic Ballads of Giant Heroes. It costs one energy to use this. It's got a six-inch pulse. You can only do it once per turn, and states other giants within the pulse gain plus one energy. So this is an interesting part of her kit because you can see with the all of the passive abilities that she has and that really like strong melee stat, uh, Brunhilde likes to get into the mix and start fighting, but if you happen to have more than one other giant, or more than one more than what she is, I guess, I guess you'd probably want to get like two giants in there to make sure you're getting the maximum efficiency out of it, but uh, she has this support ability for other giants too, so if you happen to be playing giant heavy, she's able to get some extra uh, efficiency out of those giants because you turn her one energy into like two or three depending on how many other giants you're bringing. So she has a, a lot of interesting roles she can play within a troop considering she can support, she can fight real well, she has massive threat projection, and she's got some very interesting keywords that give her some cool synergies with other models. 
Brunhilde's signature move is on Falling Swing called a uh, Shattering Oath Stone. Now, this has slicing damage type, so it'll benefit from the giant forged blades, uh, and has the same exact damage track as uh, as Falling Swing does. There's nothing different here between the two. Um, the thing that is added here is the end step effect. If this character was slain, all other models within 8 inches, excluding friendly giants and friendly nobles, suffer one wound. Other friendly giants and friendly nobles within 8, inch, within eight inches restore all wounds instead. So you can see that her signature is... It's a it's supposed to be a defensive one, but is offensive yet. So you're doing you're likely doing damage to your opponent because they're the ones that are attacking into you. So it's very unlikely that they're going to play a high guard on an offensive attack. Uh, so you can get the get some extra damage out because even on the if they play falling swing or thrust, you're still getting two damage on there with giant forged blades. But um, this is something that your opponent has to be really. Uh, aware of when they're coming into Brunhilde. Um, if she's low on health, your opponent's going to want to get rid of her, especially if you're doing some interesting projection stuff where it's like uh, you're using bodyguard often or you're getting a lot of energy for your giants out of uh, the ballads. They um, will want to try and remove her, but shattering Oathstone means they have to be very particular about how they do it. If they're doing damage to your other giants and your other nobles, then having a Brunhilde kind of thrown into the middle of your opponent's uh, troop is probably not the greatest thing for them because, uh, of course, you're throwing Brunhilde to go out there and die, but when she does, that bubble will go off and everything within, what is it now, 18 inches of her roughly is going to either take wounds if they're opponents or your giants and nobles are going to be back to full health instead so i think the trade on that is pretty massive you're losing an activation and a big damage dealer but instead you're gaining a much more uh, efficient attritional advantage if your giants have been taking a lot of wounds and your nobles have been taking wounds too so shattering oath stone i, I have been able to do this once during a game with pr pretty decent effect um, but I didn't lean too much into the the giant and noble with her. Like, I kind of did, but they weren't taking the damage. But um, I think that Shattering Oathstone is a really phenomenal signature for for uh, an offensively defensive piece that uh, really makes your opponent have to think about what they're doing. If they don't understand how this works, or they're not really caring too much about it, then they're really going to get the rug pulled out from under them if they happen to knock the giant down. So one of the things I've been looking forward to talking about a single model is to get a little bit more in-depth with some of the synergies that are available to it, and Brunhilde has quite a bit here with how much she offers to the, to the table. Um, first, I just want to go over an easy one, which would be Gotchgut. Um, he really is going to be just your reliable damage dealer. Um, he has a, a little bit more health than she does and doesn't start losing energy until a little bit later. Like he needs to take nine wounds in order to be losing energy, but getting him up to three energy is really awesome. And then if you're bringing other nobles with you, uh, he also has bodyguards. So I know that the one of the recent changes was that bodyguard is no longer a limitless thing that you can just stack up. So having two of these bodyguards is really nice and being able to get extra energy on Gotchgut is good. He's also a mercenary, so there's even further levels of synergy. I I always like to make my synergy bubbles in like as many Venn diagrams as I possibly can. So like maybe two or three uh, synergistic keywords bouncing off in a troop as much as possible. Or not as much as possible. That's kind of like my limit, right? So um, moving on from that, we'll get more to that later. But another giant that's interesting with um, with Brunhilde is going to be Lubard. Um, mostly the big reason for that being with Ballad of Giant Heroes. Um, Righteous Fury is extremely reliable with him. Uh, it's an active ability with Brunhilde, so she only needs to do it to get him to, to get Lubard to have his third energy so that he can go ahead and Righteous Fury and get all those great buffs. So she's a really good enabler for Lubard and uh, just another giant for her to have around to make sure that you're like Lubard's going to be in the business and your opponent's not going to want to be dealing with him or, or your opponent's going to be want to be dealing with him but then Brunhilde's uh shattering oath uh or shattering oath stone is going to make it so it really confuses your opponent on what you want to do and I think that's really 
that really can't be overstated with Giants because they're extremely straightforward. They don't often have a whole lot of shenanigans they can pull off. So being able to have something that makes your opponent have to think about how they want to take apart your troop is really important for how they end up functioning. And again, with having multiple Giants, uh, they don't get a lot of energy. So Brunhilde being able to allow them to start taking harvest actions and get some of those Moonstones up is really helpful for them. Shifting over to Brunhilde's mercenary keyword, I wanted to talk about Agatha the Tavern Frau. So uh, her Deutsch Courage has a, has a buff for mercenaries. Whenever they take their first melee attack, or take a melee attack, sorry, within six inches of her, um, they'll just get a free energy. So Brunhilde can do something like Battle of Giant Heroes to put out a bunch of energy for her giants and then scooch forward and then take a swing at someone and then get another energy so she's able to swing again or do whatever she wants to do, step out, it, whatever she's planning to do here. But Agatha is a great enabler for that with just Deutsch Courage. But then Enticing Offer can change Brunhilde's threat range again. It can either move Brunhilde four inches towards uh, Agatha or it can move an enemy model closer to Agatha with that 10 inch range on enticing offer. It's just this massive bit of, uh, of threat that's going on with Agatha um, that just enables the, the giant so much more. And drink your fill can also top off energy and with reducing the arcane stat on uh, Brunhilde or any of the other giants outside of Lubart or something, you're really not too worried about reducing their arcane stat. Just getting that extra energy is really huge. And if your opponent starts calling bluffs on this and you're not bluffing, uh, you're just able to get a lot more work out of your giants. Like uh, Ballad of Giant Heroes is a really great way to project extra energy and get more efficiency, but Agatha can really crank that up she can also take energy off of models that your opponent might use to try and take giants down. Like if they've got a, com a combat focus specialist, uh, you can really uh, sap down their effectiveness by trying to take their energy off of them. It's a two inch range, so like it's not the it's not the most um, simple thing to do in the universe, but it's still something that's available to you if you wanted to try and get into it. Especially considering that um, Agatha's uh, signature move is so punishing. Now there are a couple different things in the game that synergize with Brunhilde's Norse keyword, but I wanted to touch on one that I feel like is the most important, and that's going to be Olim. Uh, the big one here being Valhalla, that just says if a, a Norse or friendly young jack model starts a jog within six inches, um, they can move an additional plus two inches as long as they end that jog engaging an enemy. With Brunhilde having that two inch melee range on her, that means she's got uh, an eight inch melee threat with just her jog action and that compiled with everything else that we've talked about that can try and help uh, adjust Brunhilde's positioning can make it so you're rocketing out really far across the table. Um, with Olam, you also get the buttermilk elixir ability where he can heal Brunhilde if he wants to or end up putting an extra energy on her because she is Norse. Um, so Olam's just a really great enabler and is a little bit more of a pain in the butt for your opponent to deal with. And with Fortune being on him, it makes it pretty reliable that buttermilk elixir can do pretty much whatever you want it to do. So I've decided to set up a game on uh, Tabletop Simulator. It's more of like a, just a deployment for the kind of list that I've been talking about a bit. Um, just to illustrate or so people can visualize what uh, the threat range looks like on Brunhilde here. So um, I've set this up to where this Brunhilde is where deployment is. And then she's taken her... Uh, um, her reaction step towards Joanna here who was able to get like so let's just pretend that this is like getting close to the end of turn one here so some of these pieces have been able to get into position so again Brunhilde on deployment reaction steps to get close to Joanna who had moved up here and then we have Loki back here just chilling by this tree and what he's done is when uh, Brunhilde was over here he just used the shipwright ability to pull Brunhilde up to this spot here and then that had we, I just decided to say that he had pulled a, a blue one or something like that because it's really easy. Um, I have Agatha here just to kind of tip uh, or get some extra energy on Brunhilde because she'll need some when she gets there since she spent one to make that step. But we um, also can get extra energy off of Olin. And since Olin is uh, within six inches, let me get my little tab ruler here. Since Olin's within six inches of Brunhilde, 
um, he'll he'll be able to get his Valhalla ability to go off on her because she is Norse. So then we can see her jog action is um, a six inch walk just to up here. And then when we look at where she's where she is, um, this is a uh, you know within two inches to vicious here, um, almost within two inches to, or I'm sorry, this is vicious. Sorry, we were so almost two inches within vicious, definitely two inches within grub here. Um, you know, this is not like, I'm not doing this to say like, this is the best way you need to play Brunhilde. though. Like she just needs to go in and go in front of your opponent's entire army because she doesn't have like amazing defensive abilities. So she will get cut down by a lot of these models when she's in there. But, um, it does illustrate how far you can get Brunhilde. Um, just on turn one. So if I kind of like do some, this is non-linear, right? So um, the threat range on her is pretty intense to calculate. But right now she's almost she's 12 inches away from where she started, and that was with a few non-linear steps, right? So um, I think this is a good way to show that you know Brunhilde can get pretty far up there and start taking pieces out. I do think an interesting, a more interesting way to kind of use her is kind of like a, a flank collapser so she might be able to do something like maybe she goes this way instead and ends up dealing with a uh, boom Mc, or boom boom mcboom here right um and then she can try and collapse into beaky because there's not as much support over here as there is on this side um you know trying to grab doug if uh if doug's gonna be uh hunting out some moonstones or something as an interesting pr prospect as well. I just think Brunhilde can be an extremely massive scalpel that's tied to a hammer. And I hope that this uh, little tabletop simulator setup gave people an idea of how far she can actually go in this game. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. There are so many more things that can be talked about with Brunhilde. It really seems like she's a simplistic character but there's just a lot going on with her in terms of what she brings through her support abilities her melee presence and the other keywords that she happens to synergize with um, I hope you enjoyed this like different take on going deeper on a single model I'd be interested in people pe interested in learning if people would like to see more of uh, this type of review happen um, with not just the models from like a troop box but picking one out and solely kind of really dialing in on or zooming in on what this model can do and some of the things that might be uh, good synergies with it so uh, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video